and uh, in order to register your model you need to put uh, you need to uh, there is a, another component or an asset given by machine learning as your machine learning and that is called model so a model when you register it a uh, pickle file i'm pretty sure you all know what is a python pickle file I'm not going to go into much detail about that. Okay, is kind of created, and this you can share with your customer in order to consume the model. Okay, then you have environment. You have an environment where, uh, what kind of um, uh, Python do you need? What kind of packages do you need? Okay, you specify like when you. Uh, when you work in a development environment, you have this requirements dot um, uh, txt file, right? Where you mention what uh, uh, what um, version of the software do you need? Which software do you need? Which packages do you need? Okay, um, we will. Uh, you kind of mention it in that document, right? In that text file. So it's the same thing in this environment. So this is like a YAML file that is there. You can either create your own file or you can put it in the Azure container registry. That is also fine and you can use it. OK, so they are basically like scripts. OK, that you need to uh, mention or you don't need to mention. You can take a default environment as well. Then data, of course, you need to access data. You like I said, once you get the data, you need to store it uh in um in some uh, place right so you need to uh have an access to the data so one of the component is data and what are components it's nothing but something uh, which makes uh, easy to work in your workspace so i will be showing you all what are components so uh, once i show it i think it will be much easier for you all to uh understand this particular term then apart from that um now let's talk about the different um tools inside the azure machine learning workspace or azure machine learning studio okay so like i said if you are not familiar with python coding okay you don't know how to uh, use uh, write a, a machine learning algorithm or train a model using python no worries azure has created a service solely and solely for people with a a, a tool called as azure machine learning designer okay it is um, it is a drag and drop kind of a service okay a uh, no code kind of a service. So if you are familiar with Azure Data Factory, okay, where you just take activities from a list of uh, activities and draw, put it into a canvas. So it's the same thing over here, okay? Here you kind of um, list all your activity, I mean, uh, all the steps that you want to perform in order to train a model, you just drag it from the predefined activities or components, okay, that Azure Machine Learning has given to you. So people who are not familiar with Azure uh, with Python coding can definitely use this um, service. And we, I'll, show, I'll give you a small demo of this as well, okay? So how you can use it, definitely we'll talk about it. Then you can use something, if you still don't want to do the drag and drop, no worries. OK, uh, automated. There is a service called as automated uh, ML. OK, auto ML <laughs> where you just have to mention the from where you're getting your data. OK, and um, then automatically Azure will decide based on the data, whether it's a classification model, it's a regression model and you, uh, use all the algorithms pertaining to classification like your logistic regression your uh, decision tree classifier all those algorithms it will take it will run on that data and give you a best performing model out of that okay so you don't have to do anything you just have to do some basic configurations okay and you will get a model train of course this particular service takes a lot of time okay because it has to compare all the models that are there okay inside uh, the 
uh, all the classification models it has to, oh, sorry algorithms it has to consider it has to if it's a regression kind of a model it has to consider that as well correct so it definitely takes a lot of time to deploy this particular service then if you're familiar with python you can use the python sdk the notebooks uh, i'm pretty sure you all know what is jupyter notebooks okay because you all have already used python and jupyter notebook is one of the most commonly used editors okay so you can use jupyter notebook to write your python uh, to deploy your models okay you but here uh, when you use a jupyter notebook okay the code and the libraries that are there apart from sk learn you need to use some uh, another library uh, called as ml flow about which i will tell you all in some time okay uh, all of that you need to use inside your in order to work with uh, python sdk so you have to clone your workspace, uh, mention the subscription that you are using, okay? What kind of a compute you are using, all of that you need to mention it in the form of a code, okay? Then you can even write a script that is a dot py extension, dot py extension onto your uh, Azure machine learning uh, environment that, or uh, studio that is also possible, okay? Uh, not just the Jupyter notebook, but also a script file, okay, YAML file, environment file, if you want to mention, you can do that. And then once that is done, if you if your code is ready for preparation, I mean, it's ready for production, okay, it's, of course, better that you use scripts, you create a pickle file, you give the environment, that is the YAML file, you give a script file, which is the file that actually executes the data that your customer will put in, okay, at the customer side, okay. Uh, that's what basically is run at the customer side and not your actual Python code, okay. So that's what, uh, if you want to create a script out of that, uh, we call it as a job, uh, call it as a job. Okay, I will tell you all what that is. Okay, uh, is uh, if you want to do that, you can do that in your Python node, Python SDK environment. So let's see how to create um, a machine, uh, how to create a workspace in uh, Azure. So I've already started my Azure portal. So I'll just be sharing that with you all. Yeah, so I'm pretty sure you all know how to use uh, Azure portal. Okay, so now I'm just going to create a resource group quickly. Just say MLRG and I'm going to keep it in East US itself. I'm just going to say review plus create. Create. So my resource group has been created. Now I'm going to create a machine learning service. So you can either come search for it, just say Azure machine learning, you'll get it, okay? Or you can just come to create a resource. You can see lots of categories. So here you can see AI plus ML and all the machine learning uh, services or AI related services present over here. Okay, so now I'm going to go with Machine learning is your machine learning. Say click on new workspace. Select the MLRG resource group. I'm going to deploy this in East US. Give it give it uh, a name. Let's say ML uh, workspace, my ML workspace. See if it's accepting. So now apart from that, if you all recall, I told in the very beginning, that there are four things that are created by default in an Azure machine learning environment. That is the storage, a key vault, an application inside, and a container registry. Okay, so you can see it is all, it, it will be created by default. I am not going to do anything. Okay, it has picked up some random names. You can see, okay. You can even create new if you all want according to your needs, but I don't, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to go with the default. And now I'm going to say review plus create. So let it do a quick validation.
So it has been validated. Now I'm going to click on create. So it will take some time to create. Okay, I don't know why there is an <clears throat> so it has a workspace already. So we need to first delete that. And then only I can deploy it again. So it's deleting that workspace. So by default, they are soft deletes. So you need to permanently delete them. <clears throat> so I'll just delete everything and we'll start again. Just give me a couple of more minutes.
so guys let's do one thing let's just take a 10 minute break okay till the time the resources get in uh deleted and all okay i will we'll meet in 10 minutes okay
Yes, guys, are you all back? Just quickly say yes in the chat box. Okay, so the workspace has been deployed. Okay, so this is how your workspace looks like. Okay, um, if you want to give anyone any control or something, you can come here and you can give any assignment, role assignment or a privileged role assignment. Okay, anything you can come and do it over here. Okay. So now if I want to use is your NL learn to learn machine learning studio. Okay. I need to launch it. So it's a separate uh, uh, browser that will open so that I can use the different services in the Azure machine learning studio. So if I click on launch. So now you can come and see. Okay. A uh, uh, workspace that has been created. Okay. Here you can see different assets, what you can manage and um, all of that. Just give me a minute, guys. Yes, so this is your uh, workspace in my uh, portal. OK, so if you want to work with your training, your model, deploying your model. So this is the environment. OK, or this is the place where you will work. So you can see everything has been listed out in a much uh, better and a clear way. OK, so if you want to create notebooks, work with Python SDK, you can use the notebooks. You want to work with auto ML. You will come over here. And if you want to work with designer, you will come over here. If you want to work with any of the assets, monitor your pipelines, monitor your notebooks, check the environments, check whether you have registered any models because you will register different versions of the models, right? So if you want to do that, you can come and see in the model asset tab. Create endpoints. I told you whether it's a real time endpoint, it's a batch endpoint. You come and see over here. You can see the components that you have used in your pipelines. You want to work with compute, you can come and see over here. Okay. So this is how your machine, Azure Machine Learning Studio looks like. Okay. So with this, we bring an end to module one. OK, here we talked about certain we talked about steps, how to deploy a machine learning model, how to train it, how just a few, just an introduction to that. OK, then we saw what is Azure machine learning? What are the different services inside machine learning? OK, and how to use what service, when to use what service is what I told you about. OK. So, and then we saw how to create a workspace. Why do we need a workspace? Um, how can you give an access to anyone within the workspace? What role you want to give? Then apart from that, I told you there are four um, default things that a workspace creates. That is a storage account, application insta insights, a key vault, and a container registry. OK, so this is what is the basic of your Azure Machine Learning Studio. Then now let's move on to module two, where we will be working on the data compute and the environment assets of your machine learning service.
okay so like i said when you are working with machine learning the primary thing that you need is the data correct so if how do i make this data available in my machine learning service is what we are going to see second we are going to see the different compute targets okay uh, depending on your need depending on your whether it's a production environment it's a development environment what kind of a compute you should use okay we will see that in brief and then finally we will see the environments that are there okay what is an environment how can you use an yaml file how can you package your environment in these in this as your machine learning service so coming to data let's see how you can make data available in your machine learning service so in as your machine learning service uh, the base the uh, base uh, or in order to locate your data okay it uses the uri concept uh, do you know what is what is the full form of uri guys can you all just quickly put it in the chat box yes guys what is a uh, what is uri why do we need an uri i mean what is the full form of uri hello am i not audible hello 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 so yes guys what is the full form of uri okay no worries <clears throat> so um somebody said uniform resource identifier correct so all of you all you know that we all browse through websites and all so we use something called www.google.com and before that there is this https okay what protocol we are using right so that's what a uri basically helps us with so it is something that helps you locate your endpoint right whether it's uh, www.google.com or any or www.facebook.com or whatever right any website it helps you locate so similar that similar concept i can use when i want to work or locate my data in the azure environment okay or from my local machine okay so azure machine learning uses this concept okay there are three common or yeah three common protocols that it uses that is the https so if you have a blob storage or uh, you want to get data from online okay so you can use this protocol then if you have familiar with as your data lake gen 2 okay or as your blob storage also uses this protocol it is the uh, abfs that is the uh, data bricks um uh, no the blob file storage as your blob file storage system okay that's what it uses Okay, so if you have any, uh, if you have data stored inside those storage accounts and you want to link it with it, you will use the ABFS protocol. And the other is the Azure ML. Okay, so these are the protocols that are used in order to connect to your data store. But we will be using, we will be taking data from the um, blob storage. Okay. then you if you have to store your data you need to create a data store that is where your where it's like a link between you uh, between the azure ml service and the data uh, i mean your uh, storage account or something like that okay so we all you something called as access keys or sas tokens okay in blob storage so that is used in order to link with the azure service okay and i will show you all how to use that okay so how can you create a data store you can create it through the uh, studio to the cli commands or through your sdk okay inside the uh, on your local machine that is totally possible and you can connect to your workspace 
now coming to data assets okay so data assets basically what type of data it is okay it's what it shows okay whether it's a file it's a folder it will point to that okay whether it's a file or a folder but in the form of a table okay is what basically is nothing but data assets it is what you decide okay what kind of a asset you want to keep it whether you're reading a csv file but you want it in the form of a table no problem you want it in the form of a file it's up to you now there are different ways in which you can create a file asset a folder asset and a table asset one such way is the uh, studio or uh, sorry yeah the studio then the other way is the python sdk and this is how you write a code for it okay so you give you take this library called as azure ai ml earlier it was azure ml core that was used but now they have introduced another library called as ml flow about which i will tell you all uh, in some time okay using that library if you want to use python sdk okay on your system or even on azure machine learning studio no problem you can get link it to your file data asset then you can create a folder data asset as well how you can create using the python sdk then ml table it's the machine learning table so if you want your data to be read in the form of a table instead of a file okay you can do that so before that uh, let's i'll just complete this entire module and then i will show you how to create a data store and a data asset and how to create a compute target using the azure ml studio so now coming to the compute target like i said when you want to deploy the model okay you will need compute you need storage i uh, sorry you need a processing unit in order to uh, work with it right so there are different compute targets available in azure so of course there are physical uh, um processing units okay that are used but they are uh, at the cloud service provider side you have to just configure it the very first thing is the compute instance it is a basic uh, form of a compute so if you don't have a cluster of people working on a machine learning service okay it's just one person okay that is working or uh, into onto this environment then you can use uh, the compute instance okay not many people are there it's only one person working then you will go for this particular instance then you have a compute cluster as the name says a cluster of machine learning i mean virtual machines sorry uh, that will be scaled up or scaled down you decide depending on your demand how how, how much are you ready to invest into it okay so if you have a huge uh, data that you are working with and there are lots of people working on it okay uh, this is the most recommended way to go around using it so that multiple people can do parallel processing okay you can distribute your data workload reduce the time and effort it takes for one person to uh, do the model training then you have the kubernetes cluster now what is the kubernetes cluster like once you have deployed the model so you have trained the model and you are ready for deployment you want to deploy it for production level you will use because that particular model will then require a higher compute a better orchestrating uh, uh, processing power uh, kind of a service and that is what is done by kubernetes okay so you need to use a kubernetes cluster in order to create that environment okay in order to uh, have that compute for your model okay so you can do it in two ways one way is either you can create a kubernetes aks that is the azure kubernetes cluster sorry aks so that is service okay or if you have a pre existing kubernetes cluster already okay you can uh, attach it to your azure machine learning service okay and start and deploy your service or your model okay 
and then finally you have a attached compute let's say you have a ex you already have a compute present like your local machine or something like that if you want to attach that to the azure machine learning service you will go for the attached compute so or even if you have a pre existing virtual machine you can even attach that to your uh, existing azure to your azure machine learning service Okay, so you can create a compute instance, not just through the studio. Okay, that is the UI interface. You can create it through uh, the Python SDK. Okay, so you can again use the same library that is the ML flow. Okay, uh, in order to create a compute instance to set up your scripts. Okay, this I will show you. Okay, so it's up to you. You can schedule the compute start. You can start, stop manually. You can do all that things. Okay, you can schedule when to start the compute, when to stop the compute. It is completely up to you. Okay, so if you want to create a cluster, again, the same thing. You can do it through Python SDK. You can do it through the uh, uh, portal, no problem. Okay, so when will you use the compute cluster? Go when you are doing a auto ML job. Okay, or you're doing a pipeline job and it's of the size is huge. Okay, and uh, it takes the workload is also huge in size. So if you want to want a faster way in order to uh, run your uh, or train your model, you will go for the compute cluster. So this is what is about the compute. Okay, uh, if you are if you want to train your model, create your uh, uh, yeah, train your model, work with machine learning algorithms. You will need to use either the compute instance or the compute cluster. But once that model has been trained, it needs to be put for deployment, out of which you need to create a real time endpoint or a batch endpoint. You will need a Kubernetes cluster. Okay, now coming to the environments. So, environments, like I said, is nothing but like a package. Okay, it's a Python package. Okay, like your requirements.txt, whatever softwares you need, what versions of the softwares you need, you put it into a form of a code and you submit it to the job. Okay, so that a uh, environment, so you all know how a container works, right? So a container comes packaged with all the environments in inside it you don't have to explicitly install it it is once you get that container it automatically installs all the packages pertaining to that application it's the same thing over here in your azure machine learning either you get it customized like you can use the container registry for that so that you can upload your own customized environment or you can use some other environment like the conda or the pip I'm pretty sure you all know what these environments are. Like, if you want to install, um, uh, like NumPy or Pandas, you normally use the Python installer uh, package that is the pip. Okay, or you use Poetry. Okay, but in if you want to work with Azure Machine Learning, you use either pip or the Conda environment. Okay, you can even create your own environments, curate it. Okay, uh, customize it. Sorry, uh, curate is something that is pre built inside the Azure machine learning service. It is available to you. Okay, so these are nothing but Conda dependency environments that are created. Okay, so you can create your own environment. I mean, you can use one of the pre built environments. You can even customize your environment depending on. So, this is how you will write a Docker image. Okay, this is how an image, uh, an environment is created. So you will use the MLflow library again. Okay, you need to know the syntax in order to create it. Okay, uh, so now earlier we used to put a YAML file. Nowadays we don't need to. There are some pre in pre built uh, environments. I just use that into my uh, Docker image and I create a. a, a in, I create an object out of that. So this is the package. Okay, this is my environment class. And out of that, I'm just creating an object. Okay. So this is another way, like I told you, it's a Conda specification file. 
okay so if just the docker image is not sufficient you can put in a conda specification as well into this and you can create your environment okay then you can use this environment once you have created and trained your model okay you can use that into it so in order to use that environment you need to give it uh, you need to use a command class okay and submit that command to the job okay so that all the in the environment the cluster the data okay that you have created will be used in deploying your model okay so this is what is basically environment okay apart from environments data and compute there is another term called as experiments okay so when a scientist works okay there are you know, uh, different experiments he conducts, right? So there is experiment experiment one that he conducts. He takes certain parameters, sees what's the output. If he wants a better result, what he will do, he will change those parameters and again do an experiment two, right? So he gives those experiments a name, right? So when I work, when I create a when I'm training a model in um, in a machine learning uh, workspace on Azure, okay, so I can make certain modifications in every step that I do. Okay, let's see if this step didn't work. Okay, let's try some other step into that. Okay, uh, that is totally possible. Okay, so when I change those. Uh, configurations or make some modifications in the steps change certain parameters okay we kind of put it into uh, something called as experiments so these experiments are nothing but a collection of uh, the modifications like i said how a scientist you know tries and uh, you know he tries different things okay and he gives those and he you know makes a, a note of those outcomes right so it's the same thing with your environments so if you have made any modifications uh that has not worked then you change something and so and so forth if you want to you know make a note of that you put it into a environments uh section okay so that is what is the role or that is where an ex an experiment comes into picture so for like what um on what data set you are using this okay like i gave you an example of loan prediction okay or let's say you are predicting whether a person will get diabetes or not okay so for that you give it a name related to your prediction so like you are doing a diabetes training your loan training or something like that and under that you mention okay this was my experiment one experiment two experiment three and those experiment one, two, three in pipe in um, Azure machine learning is called as pipelines. Okay, they are called as pipelines. Clear? So it's pipeline is nothing but like a job, okay, which you submit inside a experiment. So if you're doing a diabetes experiment, okay, and inside that you take some, uh, you have made a pipeline of certain parameters which which have not given you a good result. You uh, so that becomes like a job one. Then if uh, you make some modifications, that becomes like pipeline or job two, okay. So this is how you work with a environment or data and compute in azure machine learning so once now we have launched the workspace so let's see how to work around data how to uh, you know uh, um, how to create a compute in azure machine learning studio so i'm going to go back to my workspace So now I'm going to come to data. So here you can see two things, data assets and data stores. 
Okay. Before that, I want to create a block storage. So I'm going to quickly do that. was all locally redundant okay and now i'm going to say review <laughs> now click on create Okay, so the resource has been deployed. I'll just upload a data quickly into a container. So I have uploaded data. Okay, so it's a diabetes uh, CSV uh, file. Okay, so if you want to see the data, so I'll just quickly show it to you what kind of a data it is and what kind of a data uh, it contains. Okay, so zeros and ones, you can see it's a definite output. So diabetic column is my predict uh, is my target column. OK, is my label column. OK, there it's predict fair for zero. I think it means non diabetic and for one it means diabetic. OK, or reverse. So it's a definite thing. It's up to you what you want to uh, uh, use it for. OK. So here, what kind of a, uh, uh, what kind of a algorithm will I use, guys? Any well, can you all just quickly put it in the chat box? Yes, guys, what kind of uh, algorithm will I use? Yeah, that is fine, but is it classification or regression? Yes, correct, classification. <clears throat> okay, so now let's create a data asset. OK, so I'm here now the asset. I'm going to keep it as uh, so. So here you can see the types of assets. OK, you have file, folder, table, or you have data sets as tabular and file. OK, so I'm going to keep it tabular. This is from the earlier version. OK, like a, now in I think on 14th March only they have updated this. OK, so these were from the earlier versions. Earlier we didn't have these options. We had only these two options. Now these options have been introduced. OK, but I'm still going to go with the tabular format. OK, I'm going to say data. Diabetes. Data. Set. OK, click on next. Now you have four options, sorry, five options from where you can upload the data. OK, from your uh, storage accounts from local file. OK, you can just take uh, select the local file. OK, but I want to show you all from the block storage. 
okay if in case you are sharing the blob storage then how you can do it see from web files as well okay or you can use open data sets that are available on the azure open data sets platform okay, so i'm going to go with the blob storage next so here now you can see these two are created by default okay but i want my own data store okay uh, in order to create a link between the service and the storage account so i'm going to click on new i'm going to give this diabetes data store so now you can see the storage accounts have been listed under my subscription so i'm just going to click on this okay select the container data okay now i'm going to come back to my storage account okay here if you scroll down you can see we have an option of access keys so i'm going to take you can take any one of these keys that is fine okay but take the first key or i mean the this option key not the connection string you have to paste the key okay so in order to see that you have to show it copy it come over here and paste it okay so now it will create a data store for diabetes it's like a link service between your blob storage and your uh, azure machine learning service so now here i'm going to select this store say next and select the diabetes csv so you can see it has automatically picked up the uh, data file click on next now here you can do a quick check you can have a, a, a preview of your data okay how many rows uh, what kind of encoding has been used okay what kind of a file it is so delimited we all know is the csv file okay uh, so it will take first line as headers and all of that you can even if you do next you can see the schema of every column if you want to change the schema you can do that okay these are the options for doing that okay so this is what automatically it picks up from the data but if you want to do any change you can do that over here and now if you click on next you can see you can do a quick review okay what type of data source is it is okay what is the data store name what is the file that we have selected what are the file or, or what is the type of data okay what is the type of file i'm sorry whether it's a csv file it's a json file and so and so forth you can see over here so now i'm going to click on create so this is how it has created so you can see it has created a azure ml uri but the storage uh, uri is the https okay so this is how you create a simple uh, this is how you create or get data okay there are various ways in which you can get the data so one way is through the blob storage now the other thing that we will need need is the compute so i'm going to go and create a new compute earlier i i had created one compute but now i'm going to show you how to create a new compute so here you can see we have four options compute instance compute clusters kubernetes and attach compute so now i'm going to create a compute instance because my data is not that big nor am i sharing my data with anyone okay workload with anyone so i'll go with compute instance so i'm going to click on new you can give it a name so i'm just going to say my first compute instance and just say 29 today's date let's see if it accepts it yes it is accepting i'm going to go for a cpu type of a virtual machine okay and whatever basic format it is giving or you can select a format so i'm going to go with ds uh, 12 i think it's gone i have already used it okay so we'll go for ds 
okay and just say create so it takes time to create a compute Okay, till the time this is getting created, let's move on to the next uh, topic. Okay. So, in uh, during the introduction, I told you that there are three uh, services in uh, Azure Machine Learning. Okay, one is the designer. Second is the auto ML and third is the uh, notebook or the Python SDK. So now we are going to see the designer tool of Azure Machine Learning Studio. OK, so there are two things in it. OK, we are going to see how to create a pipeline, how to train a model uh, in Azure Machine Learning Designer. OK. So when we um, work with a machine learning model okay and since you all have worked with the machine learning model can you all just tell me the initial steps that are involved in a machine learning model before you put any algorithms or anything 
okay or train it train that model what are the necessary steps required in it like i've got the data okay and do you think the data that i am going to get is going to be the one that i can use in order to train it yes guys Okay. So when we work with a data, okay, the data is collected from various sources, okay, and uh, that particular data, okay, is is something that will not be in the appropriate format or form, correct? There can be columns which are not, uh, which have spelling mistakes. There can be data which can have spelling mistakes. Right, it can have missing values or it can have null values, right? Or at times, um, uh, there can be um uh, data that is in incorrect uh data type. Probably uh it is an integer, but it is being read as string. Okay, so before we pull, train a model, I mean apply some machine learning algorithm on top of that. Okay, we need to have our data to be perfect. Okay, and in order to do that, we need to perform some cleaning and transformation activities. Correct. So, if I have to perform these activities, okay, we need certain libraries. Okay, if you're working with Python. SDK, I'm pretty sure you might have used the pandas data analytics libra library, correct? Where you work with data frames and you clean the missing values, remove the missing values, handle errors. Okay, probably you re replace the missing values or null values with the mean of certain columns, right? You, if it's a categorical, if it's a uh, column like the like the diabetic column where it is zeros and ones you're not understanding you need it to be a categorical value so you need to do some transformation techniques over there like label encoding or one hot encoding right in order to make that data predictable you know in order to predict the outcome so we need to perform certain steps okay like clean the data okay so i'm pretty sure you might have used this <clears throat> Okay, or with, and then visualize the data, see for outliers, where is the data more uh, concentrated, where is the data, what is the distribution of the data, whether it's normal distribution or there is a skew involved. Okay, and so these all terms, guys, if it is sounding alien to you, I'm sorry, but you need to know machine learning concepts in order to, uh, you know, have, uh, uh, in order to work with it. Okay, so if your data is normalized or not, you need to check. How do you check that you use histogram? If you want to find out if there are any outliers, you use the box plot or the scatter plot. Okay, so once you visualize the data, it is easy for you to make out relationships, make out any uh, uh, distortions in your data, right? And if I have to visualize that data, I use the matplotlib library. So let's understand how can you use a designer in order to do these steps. OK, so a designer is basically a, a drag and drop kind of a tool, like I told you all, OK, where you have a canvas and on that canvas, like canvas is nothing but like a blank page. OK, how an artist paints uh, his uh, or her image from a blank canvas. Right. Same thing. If you want to deploy or train a model, you get a canvas and there you draw all your images or you drag the components. Now, what are the components uh, that you want to clean the data, whether you want to find out the missing values, OK, whether you want to split the data. I'm pretty sure you all know what do you what I mean by split the data. Guys, and why do we need to you split data in machine learning? I hope you all know that. Okay, so there are these comp pre-built components 
inside the machine learning design or service, which I just have to drag and put it on the canvas. OK, so you need to know your component. OK, it's a it's like a reusable scripts that have already been written by someone and they have been put in the machine learning uh, service for you. OK, you can even do you can even write your own component. OK, you need to register that to your workspace and make it available or you can already use the pre existing components. OK, it's just either you there, there is like a drag and drop option for it or you can even write your own component. So this is how you can write. You can use the YAML file. You can uh, use Python. And a component basically consists of three things. That is the metadata. Now, what does the metadata consist? The components, name, version, etc. Then the interface. Okay, what parameters are expected? Okay, uh, what is going to be the input? What is going to be the output? Okay, and the third thing is the code. Okay, or the environment that you want where to run, whether it's a designer or it's in the Python SDK, what environment it is. OK, so in order to create a component, your customized component, you need a script OK, that contains the workflow and a YAML file. So you need a Python file and a YAML file in order to mention the metadata, the interface, the command code OK, or the environment. OK, so this is how you can write your own component. So we are not going to see this OK anywhere. Then pipeline, like I said, it's like a workflow steps. What component comes when OK is mentioned inside the pipeline. OK, and once you are you have completed that pipeline, you need to run it, right? So if I have to run that pipeline, it is it is you need to submit it and that once you submit the pipeline, it is called as a job. OK, so if you recall, I told you in the previous module that under an experiment, you run experiment one, two, three, four. OK, so any modifications you do to the workflow, that is to the pipeline. OK, like any task you modify. OK, you don't want this particular task like clean missing data. You don't want to normalize the data. You remove that. OK. You put it on you put it as like job one or pipeline. You submit that pipeline as pipeline one, two, three. OK, and you get the timestamp of your pipeline. OK, so let's see how to create one pipeline, a simple pipeline in the designer environment. OK, so that you get an idea. OK, so we are going to do a simple one. OK, and um, let's see how to do that. So my compute is running now. You can see. OK, so let's move to authoring. Under authoring, we have a designer option. So here there are certain pre uh, uh, built pipelines. OK, if you want to use, you can even use that or you can create your own one. So I'm going to go and create a new pipeline. So this environment now this page that you see is nothing but the canvas where you will drag and drop all your components okay and create a workflow or a pipeline in order to train your model you can even change the names okay you can edit it okay you can say pipeline one okay pipeline two okay and after that you can see you get a timestamp when was this pipeline edited when it, was it submitted and so and so forth OK, so keep a logical name. OK, that's one of the best practices. And now coming to the components. So like I said, you need to work with the data, clean it, transform it. OK, so that you need certain components. Then after that, you need to use the machine learning algorithms. OK, so what machine learning algorithms you want to use? Then at times there are certain restrictions in these components you don't get the desired component that you want. So you can use Python or R language okay, to execute a specific command uh, using the Python language. Okay, So if you uh, want, you can add up a, a component or an activity onto the canvas. 
then you have r also here it is you can execute a r script then you can do certain feature selections okay you all know what is feature selection okay you can do certain computer vision activities as well okay now here we are going to work with a simple uh, uh, regression model okay so i'm going to use a regression model or you can even use so now if you click on the data tab you can see the data set that you have created that is the diabetes data set you can even use that it's up to you okay so i'll just use this data and i'll drag it over here okay so now since this data is of a classification uh, supervised machine learning okay so we need to use the classification algorithms okay but before that i want to clean this data i want to mention uh, which is my label column i don't want certain columns okay we can do that okay if i want to do certain transformations i'll come under the data transformation tab so here you can see there are lots of options to do that okay you can use these go search for it okay so i'll just say um let's just go to my data you can just drop any one of these columns that is also fine okay so come here let's just take an activity so that it will clean the missing values whatever missing values are there okay so now connect this output to this input okay now here we need to do certain modifications so i'll double click on this okay now here you get an option okay which columns you want it to be want it to clean which you don't want you can select so in order to do that you come to edit columns okay here i'm first going to say all columns include all columns okay and i'm going to say save collapse this tab okay then let's say we want to remove duplicates or let's say we want to drop certain columns so we'll go for select columns in data set okay so i'm going to connect this cleaned data set to the data set okay and now double click on this again edit column here i'm going to say all columns include all columns and now i'll add another rule which will say exclude okay so if i say column names so here you can see like is in the it should give me a column list which is not coming okay so i'll just say pregnancies it should give me a name okay fine and i'll say say so what it will do it will not take pregnancies column okay that is there i hope the spelling is correct yeah so it will not take this column and it will take all the rest columns okay now we all know that we need to split the data okay uh, in order to train our models okay so on Uh, some percentage it will train the algorithm apply the algorithms and on the rest it will test whether it is working fine or not and then score the model and then we will finally evaluate the model correct so if i have to do that i need to first of all split the data set so if i want to split so i'll again come here so here you can see we have an option so i'm just going to drag that option onto the canvas and connect this over here okay and now i'm going to edit the parameter so the commonly used split ratio is of 70 30 7 is to 3 okay so here it is taking 0.5 by default i'm going to say 7 okay and collapse this particular uh, component 
Okay. Now, once we have done all the cleaning and the data transformation steps, okay, and we have split the data, okay, you can even validate, keep on validating your uh, pipelines. That is also fine. Okay. Before you submit this job, you can uh, do that. So, what it will do, it will check, keep on checking at every step whether it is performing the output as per your needs or not, you can do that. So if you have to do, you can go for validate. Okay. Now I have to use a machine learning algorithm. Okay. So here you can see there are 19 algorithms that are there that have already been created by someone and submitted over here. Okay. So if you want to do clustering, you want to do classification, you want to do regression, if you want to do neural networks, deep learnings, you can also do that. Okay, but since this is a classification model, I'm going to go for a two class logistic regression. Okay, now I have taken the algorithm. Now we need to train the model. So if I have to do training, I will come to model training. Okay. Under that, we have an activity. So you can see trains a classification or a regression model in a supervised manner. So I am going to drag this activity over here. Okay. And connect the untrained model over here. And connect the output of this over here. Now, when we are training a model, we need to give the label column, correct? So, my label column over here is diabetic. If you come and see over here, this is my target or my label column, correct? So, I'm, just, I'm going to mention this as my column, okay? And I'm going to save it. Collapse this component. Now, once it has trained. We need to score the model, right? So if I have to score the model, I will have to take the appropriate component. So come to model scoring. And I will drag score the model. So it will give me the predictions. Okay, it will check my model. And now I'm going to connect this to this. So once it has scored the model, we need to evaluate, okay? Uh, based on certain matrix. Now, since this is a classification model, so it's going to use AUC, uh, RU, ROCs, uh, F1 score, precision, recall, all those performance uh, parameters in order to evaluate whether my model is working fine or not. So I'm going to now drag or evaluate model. Okay, and connect this. Over here. So this is how a workflow or this is how your pipeline is designed. So you took the data, ap applied certain transformations to it, split the uh, uh, split the data, okay, into a ratio of 70 and 30. Okay, so 70% will be used for training, 30% will be used for testing. Okay, apply your untrained model, okay, train them score them, see which is performing better, and then evaluate their performances. So once I have created this pipeline, so you could see I used, I did not use coding anywhere. Okay. So the ones who are not, uh, uh, who do not like coding can go for this approach and deploy their model. Okay. So now once this is done, okay, we need to submit this pipeline as a job. Okay, and check whether it is working or not. Okay, so I'm now going to click on submit. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I forgot one small detail. You need to you connect this to this. It needs another data set. So this is the train and this is the uh, other 30%, the testing data set. I completely forgot. Okay, so now uh, it has saved. Now, if I click on submit it. Ah. The other thing, yes, is to attach a compute. So if you all recall, you have already created a compute. 
So you can come to settings and you can uh, configure your compute settings come to compute instance, select the compute. So I'm going to go with this. OK, and select the appropriate data store. So if you recall, we have created a diabetes data store and I'm going to select on that and I'm just going to collapse this. OK, now let's submit the job. OK, here now you can see we need to create an experiment. OK, uh, for what are you using this particular job for? OK, so here I'm going to create a new one. OK, and I'm going to say. Diabetes. Experiment. OK, so for what experiment I'm using this particular pipeline I am mentioning. So I'm just going to say. Submit. So it is uh, running my pipeline, running my job. OK. So it has success. It is still running. OK, you can see it is opened in a new browser. OK, you can see the status. It is still running. Even here you can see the status.
so now you can see your pipeline job has run successfully and it is completed so now if you want to see the uh, output you can just come here click on preview data evaluation results okay and you'll get a complete picture of the roc curve a auc what is the threshold confusion matrix okay these are the predicted values and these were the actual values what is the difference okay what is the accuracy of this particular model okay all that information you can see over here okay f1 score recall all those factors for every value okay these are the uh, this is the score output okay and then it has evaluated it. You can even see your score output. Okay. Just say score data set. And compare all the values side by side, all the columns you can see. So if it has taken these parameters, okay, what is the output? What is the predicted output? Okay. So if it, so you can see there is a difference. It is, it is the actual value is zero, but it is one. But for second, it has predicted it correct and so on and so forth. So you can see column wise also how it has scored your how the this is a predicted. Sorry, this this is the actual value and what is the predicted value, how close they are. OK. OK, so this is how you can use a pipeline. OK, then you can come to create inference pipeline. OK, it's not working in my case, but if you have the subscription, OK, and you can create batch or real time endpoint using that inference pipeline. OK, it's not working for me since uh, quite a lot of time. I don't know. I'm trying to figure it out. OK. But I didn't. I ran out of time for this particular uh, webinar, so I couldn't look into it. Okay. So you could see how easy it is. So if you come to jobs, okay, you can see your experiment name, okay, and how many pipelines or jobs it has executed. So probably if you change the pipeline, okay, in the designer environment, okay, you do some changes. You can just rename that particular job and you can see the output in the experiments. Over here. OK. Uh, can you see my? I've stopped sharing actually. I have stopped sharing my screen, so that is why it is not visible. So, this was the design or to uh azure machine learning okay now we move on to the next service that is the auto ml service okay like in designer still you had to do drag and drop options right uh just before i get into this guys can you see my screen okay so in designer, we still had to do lots of drag and drop options, select what uh, algorithms you want to apply uh, and um, do some uh, transformations, cleaning of the data set, correct? But in let's say you even don't want to do those steps. Okay, you want it to be fully automated for you. Just you have to mention the data set, the compute, and select which algorithms you want. 
and it will automatically train the model, do the cleaning steps, identify what kind of a machine learning algorithm it needs to apply depending on the data set. Okay, it is done completely by the auto ML service in Azure. So what is auto ML? So instead, like I said, instead of you doing things, it will automatically do it. Okay, give just by basic configurations like the data set and the uh, compute this by telling okay this is what it is and rest is all taken care by azure so auto ml allows you to do multiple processing okay Tra pre processing transformations it will take care on its own clean the data set select certain columns select the feature columns understand the target column or the label column okay and apply different algorithms on it at the same time and out of that it will select the best model and give you the performance matrix for that okay so you just have to tell the machine okay this is my data set use this compute and then rest is all up to you okay so you uh, what does it so if you want to do any of those classification regression types you just give your data set it will automatically predict okay the categorical value the numerical value for regression time series automatically it will predict okay and based on the data it will give you all the output okay so we'll do one thing we'll deploy this particular thing Okay, it takes a lot of time to use, uh, I mean, for this particular feature to uh, implement, get implemented. Why? Because, of course, it is going to use so many algorithms. I'll just show it to you all how it works. Okay, and we put it to run. And then uh, towards the end of this webinar, we will see how to work with it. Okay, we'll see the output. So I'm going to come to auto ML over here. Okay, I'm going to create a new auto ML job. Okay, I'm going to select this data set. Okay, the diabetes data set itself I'm going to use. I'm going to go on next. I'm going to mention the target column, which is diabetic. Select the compute. Okay. Or you can even create a new one. But I'm going to use the experiment same. Okay, I'm just going to say uh, the same experiment I'm going to use. Go to next. Okay, so, so here you can see it has automatically understood. It is a classification job. Okay, it's a classification model. Okay, you can come to additional settings. Okay, you can see what primary metric it is going to use. You can configure that. Okay, but I'm going to keep it AUC as of now. You can go for um, uh, this as well for uh, accuracy. Then here you can see a list of models that you want to select. Okay, you it's up to you which model to use. So I'm going to go for logistic regression, uh, decision tree, random tree. X. I'm going to go for grade X, XG boost classifier also. Let's just go for these. Okay. And then. Yeah, this is fine. So you can even give it a threshold. Okay, how many hours it should work? Okay, after if the job is taking a really lot of long time, okay, you can just cut short it. Like after one hour, it should like you know stop the this thing or whatever you want. You can do that. Okay, it's up to you. What should be the exit uh, criteria? You decide, and you just click on save. Come to next. Uh, here, just if you want to give a validation, okay, if you want to do any uh, validations like the K uh, uh, validation, okay, K fold cross validation, the Monte Carlo validation, you decide, okay, uh, you know, na, uh, just training and testing sets don't help at times, okay, if you want to uh, optimize your data, you can go for a third validation set, okay, it's up to you whether you want to use that or not. Okay, but I don't want to use it here. So I'm just going to keep it on the auto mode. If it requires, it will use it and just click on finish. Okay, so all your details of the auto ML. So you just saw 
I didn't do anything over here. OK, I just simply put in the data set, the com compute selected which algorithms I want, and it will now start the. Auto ML job, so you can see the setup. OK, so let it run and we will see how how much time it takes to uh, run this particular job. So this is how auto ML is used. OK. Then. Now we will come to another the third service that is there in uh, machine learning uh, studio. That is the. Jupyter notebook or the Python SDK. OK, and how you can use that in order to track your models, create your models create a pipeline, create an environment, create a compute, create or uh, create a data store, data asset. OK, so earlier uh, machine learning Python SDK had a library called as Azure ML Core. OK, it is still there. You can still use it, but now it has come up with a much better library called as ML Flow. OK, so ML flow is generally used in order to work with the Python SDK. So when you so these are the uh, lessons that we are going to walk through in this particular um, module. OK, so we, I'm not going to go and write a code guys here. I will just show you how you can write a simple code. We are just going to work with one of the codes. OK, um, and you can then I'll share the appropriate link for the labs of DP 100 and then you can go and try it on your own uh, and uh, do some hands on by yourself, change the data set and all of that. OK. So now. What is ML flow? Like I said, it's a library. It's an open source library where you can manage all your models, machine learning models, experiments, track them, auto log them. OK, log them, see the parameters, see the matrix. OK, that are involved. Configure your data, configure your compute. All of that under one umbrella, you can do it using the ML flow library. So ML flow is an open source library. You can even install it on your Python SDK on your local machine. OK, as well as use it on the Azure ML studio. If you don't have the capacity to install uh, a Python SDK, you can use it online. OK. So what does this particular uh, ML flow do? Like I said, it helps you do everything that you were doing in, in a designer in. Um, um, in. Um, Auto ML, all of that, but just you need to uh, write a code. OK, so the same things you can create. You need to create a workspace though over here. OK, and you need to link that workspace to your notebook. So you need to use the ML flow library. OK. So we will see this in a short time. OK. Then you like I said, if you want to mention the environment, OK, like your requirements or THT file, OK, uh, or your uh, Conda environment specification file. So you can create a notebook. Uh, that is a IPYNB extension to a dot PY extension. You can create that. OK, uh, inside and test that particular script. OK, I'll I'll show you a code how to uh, do that. So you need to use the appropriate terminology in order to do that. OK, you can submit a job 
So if you recall, re recollect, once we created the pipeline, we had to submit it, okay, in order to run that particular job. So if you have to do that, you can use it, put it into the script, give it to your customer, and automatically it will be, once the customer runs the script, it will it will do the necessary um, steps and run that experiment. So this is how it works. This is the command. So instead of submitting, you here you use the command uh, uh, class, okay, and you create a uh, object that is job out of that command class, okay. So in that command class, you can see these are the parameters it takes, what code, okay. So what is the path? Then what is what is the name of the script file? That is Python train dot py, okay. What environment should it use? So this is a pre-built environment. That is there. Then you have to mention your compute name. Okay. Then you have to mention the model name. What model? What should be the name of your model? Okay. Once you uh, deploy it. And then the experiment name. Okay. Then how can you track your matrix or your models in using MLflow? There are two ways you can auto log them. So you need to use a method called as auto log or the other method is the log underscore. OK, uh, using that you can log all your experiments. OK, into the machine learning service. OK, whether you want to keep a track of them. OK, um, you you want to see where what error occurred. OK, so you I'm pretty sure you all know what is a log file and why do we use a log file? So it's the same thing over here. OK, if I have to log all of that and as a developer, it is always important to log your information, right? So that you can go and check where that error occurred, because once you deploy the models. And give it to the customer. Guys, uh, you can't go to the customer and see what was wrong, right? So that's when these log files help you, correct? They, that's when it helps you to see where the error occurred, what mistakes were committed by the customer, and sitting at your own office, sitting in your own office, you can do those changes and tell the customer, okay, this is where it went wrong, this is what happened, okay? So for those purposes, logging your models is important and keeping a track of that is also important. And if you have to do it using the ML flow, uh, you can do it using these two methods. So this is how you enable auto logging, okay? So you can see uh, uh, you need to import the ML flow library and just method called as auto log earlier you you we need to use the run library run uh, class and then uh, on the run class once we create then we had to use uh, another uh, method okay but now directly they have given you this option then like i said the other method is to uh, use a log underscore methods okay the log uh, uh, depending on what and how much you want to log you can uh, use the appropriate method. So if you want to just log the parameters, the input parameters, what the function is taking, you do that over here using the param uh, underscore. Uh, no, there is no much difference between the two. MLflow is an open source library, so you can install it on your Python SDK on the local machine as well. And you can, if you use it on Azure, then it becomes Azure MLflow. That's it. There's not much difference between the two. Then if you want to use, uh, create a log file, okay, you need to make it into an artifact, okay, so that you can see, uh, in, you can uh, use it to see the, uh, you know, uh, visuals of your uh, log file. Okay, so you can use the artifact uh, method. So these are certain ways in which you can use. So this is how you can see where you can go and see your log files. Okay, once you have logged it. So these are the artifacts. So you can see uh, images, like accuracy, what was it? What is the AUC, ROC curve? Okay, so this is how it looks like at times you would like to retrieve your matrix okay uh you don't want to give much 
you or you want to give like a control over your uh, matrix c compare them okay uh, compare different mat uh, matrix okay of your different jobs okay you can do that you can retrieve the data compare them okay uh, so if you have to do that you can do it through the ml flow library as well okay so let's see how to uh, we'll just see how to use this uh, particular so artifacts, like I said, if you want to create a log file, okay, out of your and create visuals of that matrix, like you have submitted a classification job, okay, you want to see the visuals, you want to see the ROC, AUC curves, like you saw in designer under the evaluate and the score models, right? You saw the visuals, right? Those were already written by somebody. And I was using that. But if you want to create and log your own, okay, so you can use the artifact method to do that. Okay, so if the customer has done some, uh, at his side, he has entered some data and uh, he's, he, can't, he wants to see all the visuals, so, and so do you, okay, you, you go for the artifact method. That's the only thing. Then you can do hyperparameter tuning as well. So you see that your model is not performing at its full potential. There is some, uh, there is very little accuracy that you are getting. Okay, so instead of changing the algorithm, you can do a, uh, you can do a hyperparameter tuning. Okay, so what do you do at times? Uh, like, let's say you are traveling on a road. Okay, and there are multiple routes uh, that you want you take in order to reach to one destination, right? So you, what do you do in order to find out which is the best route? You uh, uh, travel on each path, right? You take each road someday, right? And out of that path, you find one best uh, road that is uh, probably, uh, you know. Um, or, uh, reaching the destination in a shorter time compared to the other roads. But then you see there is still that path, you know, is not performing to its, like it's still taking, not like it's still taking time for you to reach that destination. So what do you do? You change the parameters, like probably you'll change the speed, you will change the tire or you, or, you know, some other modifications you will do to the parameter itself. So that's what basically hyperparameter tuning is. <laughs> Depending on your algorithm, you tune it so that instead of changing the algorithm completely, okay, you just change the uh, parameters inside it, tune it to some specifications, okay, and try and extract as much as uh, performance you can from the same model itself okay so uh, in hyperparameter tuning you give a regularization rate that is called uh, no azure doesn't do it for you you can do it uh, uh, you have to configure it okay what uh, regularization rate do you want okay uh, that you will have to configure and there are various ways in which you can do it Okay, uh, the common, no, I will not be showing that we don't have much time. Okay, but I will uh, tell you how, where you can do it, but I will not be doing it. So guys, like I told you, this is just a webinar. Uh, we are not going to go in much depth. Okay, because otherwise it will take a it will take a day's time. Okay, uh, so since there are very few people, we are not going to go much into depth. Okay, but if you want to learn about it, you can definitely. Yeah, but there are not many people. So as per our rules, we have to like cut short. Okay, uh, the time. Uh, like I said in the beginning, also we are just going to uh, uh, keep it as short as possible. Okay, so if I have to tune the parameters, so there are two ways. That is the discrete and the continuous. Okay. So in discrete, you give a discrete parameter, like a choice from a list of values, okay? Um, like 
probably a range of values you give. OK, and you can then select what best suits those discrete values. So when you have a classification model, of course, you're going to go for a discrete hyperparameter tuning. OK, then even you can go for a continuous for your regression types. OK, see, adjust. OK, uh, uh, like when you are on a radio, how you tune the frequencies, right? Only at certain frequencies, you get the best uh, uh, channel, right? So it's the same thing over here. At what regularization rate, what accuracy you are getting, OK, what RMSE score you are getting, value you are getting, you have to tune it accordingly. OK, so you have to decide that search space. OK, whether it's a discrete, whether discrete values are required or continuous values are required, you need to check for yourself. OK, and depending on that, you have to do your hyperparameter tuning. Now, hyperparameter tuning or uh, a sweep job, it, ha it depends on different parameters, what sampling you have done. OK, so before any machine learning or uh, training is done, you uh, uh, I hope you all know what is sampling like from a big population. You select a small sample and if you have to do that, you do uh, certain samplings. You have random sampling. You have uh, two types, probabilistic and non probability uh, samplings. OK, so in order to do that, what kind of sampling is done? OK, you have to then see what hyperparameter tuning can be applied. OK, so if it's a grid sampling, you will probably go for discrete. OK, if it's a random sampling, again, uh, you have to decide. It depends. It's a mix that you go for discrete uh, hyperparameter tuning or you can go for a continuous. So for that, you have uh, different methods. One such is mentioned here is the SOBOL. OK, so you can reproduce those results okay, by tuning the parameters. OK, and if you have a Bayesian, you can uh, go for the Bayesian or you can use the Bayesian algorithm. You will have to just uh, see that. OK, so like I said in the very beginning, this is not what we'll be uh, teaching you all. So it's something that you have to go and study on yourself. So SOBOL is one of the methods under the if you have uh, taken. Um, you have used random sampling. OK, and you want to uh, do a hyperparameter tuning onto that. OK, so you use SOBOL method, OK, which is like adds a seed to your uh, hyperparameter job. OK, and then you decide the distribution, how well it is performing. OK, so it's one of the methods under depend if you have used random sampling as the method for your sample. OK. So this is what is hyperparameter tuning in Azure. OK, so SOBOL you can consider as a variation of your random sampling. OK, it's like a part of your uh, random sampling itself. OK. So let's just see the auto ML job. OK, so it's still running. Till then, what we will do is we'll just quickly see uh, how to work around a notebook activity. OK, so here you can see it's taking a lot of time. OK, I had told you all earlier only. So it's now training the models and in some time we should see the output. OK, so now I'm going to go to notebooks. OK, here you can create notebooks. OK, so by default it has created a folder under my name. OK, here you can come upload the notebooks, open it in VS Code. OK, uh, create a new file. So they create depending on what you want. You can create a file. Whether you want to create a script file, you want to create an environment file, you want to create a file in R. It's up to you. You decide what you want to do. OK, so uh, in order to save time, I had already uh, uh, cloned uh, the Azure ML Labs that Microsoft offers, OK, in order to save time. OK, I have cloned them. That is, I'll share the link with you all. You can also go and clone it, OK? And they already have pre-existing uh, notebooks 
for you all to practice uh, understand the code. So if I just click on any one of it, you can see there are certain steps mentioned. OK, uh, you can just come read them. Try it on your own. OK, I will share the appropriate. I will share the link with you all. OK, so that you all can do it. You can even if you have Python SDK you, and you have the ML flow library installed, you need not come here and work. You can create notebooks uh, onto the Anaconda environment and uh, just clone these labs and you can even do that. But you need to have the appropriate, the compute should be of that power. Okay, you need to have that much processing, okay, in order to work with it. So let's say you want to work with data. So you can see all the steps over here. OK, given. OK, I'll share this link with you all. OK, and you need to configure. Um, I'll show it to you all later. OK, you need to have a kernel environment because notebook uses a kernel. OK, so you need to configure that. OK. Oh, if I come to labs, come to the third lab. Yeah. So this is the notebook. So here, if you see, you need to configure the kernel. So by default, it has taken Python 3.8 as your ML. You can change the kernel. Okay, I'm going to go with this. Okay. And if you want to do any changes to the kernel, you can come. Yeah, now kernel has been enabled. You can see. And of course, you need a compute so you can attach a compute from here. OK, so by default, it is selecting this. OK, so now you can come here, do kernel operations, interrupt the kernel, restart the kernel and so on and so forth. OK, so here if you see. When you do a git uh, a clone operation, so the Python, uh, the ML flow library will be installed using the pip environment, pip package. OK, so if it is not installed, you will have to come to the terminal that is over here. And you will have to do it so you can see the kernel name. Uh, the as your uh, machine learning as a virtual machine has been created and my compute has been attached. OK, and the path for where these are. Uh, these files are present has been mentioned over here. OK, and so now coming to the first uh, lab. That is how you can get your data. OK, so like I said, you need to mention your workspace. You need to attach your workspace to this particular notebook in order to run. OK, so earlier there was a library called as ML core. Now you have to use a library that is AI.ML. This is a workflow library, ML workflow library. If you have to use uh, in uh, the notebook environment. So if you uh, run this. So it is being installed. I'll just restart the kernel. Just a minute, guys. has not been cloned properly, so I'm just going to delete and clone it again. OK, so I'm going to clone it again.
Yeah. So if you come here and do a refresh, so you can see it has come again. Now I am going to go to the labs. This has worked. I'll restart the kernel. Guys, you need to have a good network in order to work with this. Restart once. When I call. So if you face any error, guys, just do this and just check if it works. It has installed. I'll just restart my kernel. Now it has worked, okay. Now here it is trying to access my workspace. So if I run this, yes, so it is successful. My workspace has been, uh, it has identified my workspace. So you guys will need to go and uh, read about all these steps, okay. And now if I run this, so it should list my workspace. So earlier, now also it uses a config.json file. Okay, so what is this config.json file? So if you come to your Azure ML service workspace, sorry. So here you can see there is a config.json file. Okay, and one more thing here you can see there is a URL for your ML flow tracking. So once you want to track your uh, ML flow, Okay, or, or once you have registered your model and you want to track that, so this is the URI that you will be using in order to track it. Okay, so if you download this config.json, okay, this will have the information about your workspace. Now, what is the information? The name of your workspace, the region or the location where your workspace is deployed, your subscription ID. Okay, all this information, your links to the storage, your studio link, that is this link. Okay, then all this information is put in one file and that file's name is called as config.json. So as config, the full name is like the configuration details. Okay, so that's what is mentioned in this particular file. Okay. So all that information now, how will it find that information? It will find the information from this file itself. Okay. Now we have already created one data store, correct? So it's just going to check which data stores are available in your uh, in your workspace. So if you recall, we had created a data store with uh, diabetes data store. So you can see here. 
this data store it has picked up from my workspace and where did it pick up from it picked up from the configuration.json file okay then if you want to create a new data store you can so these are the parameters that it takes so this is how it looks like in a code okay you need to uh, import the necessary uh, configurations okay you can give it a name you can give it a description here you'll have to give your account name that is this name that is this name okay then give it a credential uh, that is your account key or the access key okay and create a store then similarly you can create an asset so asset like i told you is of three types that is the file folder M M ml table you de on depending on that you give it a you can create one okay so this is through the code okay instead of actually doing uh, uh, manually you are coding it okay then you can read the data okay with this particular name that you have given what version of the data if there is any change in the data you can even versioning to that okay like this is version one then somebody has given you a new data of diabetes so that becomes version two okay all of that if you want to mention you can do that as well so that is the difference between a uh, ml like that is one of the advantages of using a data asset okay data store you can't do any versioning but in a data asset you can do the versioning then you can you create another folder where you want to mention the script file okay so what it will do so i'll just do one thing it already has a diabetes csv in data so let's just run this and see okay So here we are converting that table to a data frame, pandas data frame. Okay, it's still loading. Already uploaded. Just pick up data from there. Diabetes. Hmm. That is our diabetes statement. Right?
giving an error by reading the data. This module has some error. Just check that. Saying it has no. Yeah, I think it was a problem in the library. So it has resolved. So now you can see it has read the data. It is already present in it. So that is created any store or data asset. Guys, you can do that. OK, it's the same thing like we did it uh, before we uh, went on to work with the designer tool. OK, it's the same thing. But here you have to keep in mind the libraries and everything come into picture. OK, so be careful with that. So if you don't want to do all of that, you can just simply go to the designer or the auto ML. So before that, let me just set the auto ML job that we have. OK, it's still running. Just do a quick refresh. OK, it's still running. So it takes time, guys for it to work. We'll come back to the notebooks. So now what it will, this particular thing will do, it will create a folder with the name SRC, that is a script folder, okay? Wherein we will write a Python script. So now if you come here and just do a refresh, so you can see a SRC folder has been created. Now you can just do a simple script operation. So this is the actual file that you will share with the customer at the end, and this is what he will be running. OK, so if he wants to put the data, so here we are using a parser uh, argument parse library. OK, in order to uh, add the input data. OK, over here. So now again, if you refresh. Here you will see in the SRC a script folder that is a dot py file been created. So whatever we wrote inside this over here has all come into this dot pi. And so we will send this along with the environment to the customer and he will start using this particular file. OK. Now for the input and output. OK, so this is the command. So once I want now I have, want to submit the job. OK, I have given it a script file what it has to do. OK, now I need to submit that job. I mentioned the steps. OK, now I need to submit. So I'll do a shift in this. So now you can see different URL 
been created. Okay, so there was some error now. Okay, so the input and output has been configured as the file path and this. So we'll have you'll have to change this accordingly. Okay. Um depending on what you create. So here we have just created an ML table, so that is why I think it's an issue. Okay. Yeah. So you'll have to just change those configurations over here, your input and output. You'll have to clear, make it. We have not made it. Okay. So this is how you can work with data. Apart from that, you can even work or create compute and environment. Okay, so there are codes already there. You will have to study them. Okay, it's the same thing. So if you want to create a compute, I'll just show you all the code. Okay, and I've actually showed you all in the PPT as well. Okay. So you give it a name. Okay, what kind of a compute you want, you mention. Okay, it's an instance, it's a cluster. Okay, if you have instances, how many instances do you want? Okay, if it's a, uh, here I think we are making a compute cluster. OK, so you have to then do the necessary steps. OK, for instance, it will change. So I think in the presentation, I showed you all the code. Then you will just check how many clusters are there. Then the steps remain the same. OK, so here you are training the model. OK, you have created, you are loading the data. OK, it's picking up the data from here. OK, and you are loading it, doing applying the necessary uh, algorithm so here we are using a logistic regression okay and here as well we are performing a hyperparameter tuning so this regularization rate is nothing but that okay and then you're doing a prediction okay so there are two accuracies you can see being no, sorry one accuracy and the other is for auc and then again you have to submit the job that you have created so the same statements the environment we are already using the pre-existing environment here you are giving a, a cluster name okay and so and so forth okay the same thing so with environment again the same code guys there's no difference in the code okay it's just one library you are using again you're writing a script the same script actually you are writing but you are mentioning environment so this is the environment that you are mentioning okay like your requirements.txt okay and it will list the environments that are so you should get this as the output so if you want to create a custom environment okay this is the code for it okay you need to mention what uh, environment you need Okay, you can just customize it. You can give it an YAML file also if you want to create an environment for it. Then if you want to track your model, like I talked about, you can come here, configure ML. Okay. Another way of doing or tracking your model, here you can create your own environment. Okay. In ML flow, there I think they were using some Azure ML. OK, uh, this is using the ML. You can do the same things. OK, here also you have to do the next. Yeah, so this is how it looks like in the end. OK. If you use the ML flow library. Here also you can configure the data, prepare the data, take the data from the path from any of the data stores. 
okay and uh, start using ml flow library so here you are doing uh, splitting the data okay, you are using this logging the data okay you are custom logging then you are doing hyperparameter tuning doing a hyperparameter tuning again checking the accuracy changing the mod uh, algorithm and then you are finally comparing the output once you have submitted the job so this is how you can use ml flow library apart from the azure ml library that we saw okay it comes packaged actually inside it you need to configure it okay separately you need to uh, import it separately into the kernel that's the only thing so with i'll just share this link with you in the chat box so that i don't forget So uh, this was the end of module five. How you can use the SDK, Python SDK. So apart from this, now what we are remaining with is how once you have tracked your models, deployed your models, you need to create an endpoint, okay, uh, for the customer in order to use it. So there are two ways in which we can create endpoint. And consume the models. Okay, one way is the real time or the managed online endpoint, and the other is the batch endpoint. Okay, so if you want to consume this model at a uh, production level, okay, the customer has come to you and he's, he's you have submitted the script file and everything, and you give along with that an endpoint as well, so that whatever models you have to test. Okay, like there is a unknown data that you want to test. Okay, you will do it on this particular endpoint. So once that endpoint is triggered, the script file that you have given, okay, will be executed, and whatever is at the backend, all the steps related to the model training will be executed. So this is how the execution works. Okay, so if I have to use or create uh, my an online endpoint. Okay, we need to first of all have a real time prediction, use it for real time prediction. Like I gave you the example of a rec restaurant recommender, okay, or IoT devices you want to track with day temperature or something. You need to have an online endpoint, right? So, for that, you will need to have a real time prediction. Along with that, you need to have a Kubernetes cluster. Okay, because it is for the production environment, it requires at a much larger scale. Okay, so for it, we need a Kubernetes environment. And then once that is done, you can deploy the model on that environment. Okay. So you can use MLflow to do that. So if you remember when we created a pipeline, I was getting your you should actually get two options. One is to create a real time endpoint and the other is to uh, get a re create a batch endpoint. Unfortunately for me, it's not working. So if it works at your end, great. So you can use the pipe uh, designer tool also to uh, work with a endpoint okay, or to create an endpoint. But if it's not working, you can use the notebook and you can use the ML flow library okay, to sub create an endpoint and deploy your model to that endpoint. Okay, so like I said, you need to give a script, you need to give the environment, and then finally you need to give the deployment, that is your model. Okay, so once all these three things are given, 
then uh, init method is run and then the run will run run method will run your script okay with the new data okay so this is how your model is i mean how the endpoint is consumed okay so if you want to test there's a test option okay if i i'll show it to you okay once um and for actually, I cannot show it to you through the designer, but um, through the code, definitely you can do it. So I'll just see if the auto ML job has run or not. So if there I can, I think, try and show it to you. Still running. Sorry, guys, it's just not working. I have no idea why. Okay, so this is how you can do a, a real-time endpoint. You can use, like I said, SDK using the MLflow library. So this is how you do it. So this is your input data. So you give different, different features, and then it will give you a output, okay, corresponding output. Then you can do a batch endpoint as well, like your loan example that I gave. Okay, so if you don't want it to be predicted at the same time, Okay, you can con con uh, collect batches and schedule your job. Okay, and okay, once you have reached 10 uh, inputs, okay, it will take it all together and it will then trigger that particular job and it will start and it will then do the prediction. So, if you want to do that, you can go for a batch endpoint. Uh, it's not like that ML Studio is reliable. It depends on the network that you have. I, I, I genuinely don't know why am I facing this problem. Okay, uh, it worked on some other subscription, or, but it's not working on my subscription. So uh, that can be a problem. It can be related to the Azure, but it will definitely work. Okay, it's not completely unreliable. Okay, it is totally usable. You can even use Azure Databricks. If you don't want to use as your ML, okay, you can do all the same steps over there, okay, uh, using the ML flow and all those libraries depend on the corresponding libraries, but it will be a PySpark environment. That's the only change. You will not be using Python. You will have to use Python along with Spark. That's the only change. So this is how you create a batch endpoint. The same thing, you can test that as well. Okay, you submit a test. I mean, you submit multiple jobs to get, I mean, batches together, and it will give you a predict output. I mean, it will predict the output and it will give you. So, the same thing here you don't need a Kubernetes cluster. You can use your normal compute target, whichever compute target you have used. Okay, it does not require a heavy uh, compute because it's not real time. Right, it is you're getting data in terms of batches, so you can use your own um, normal compute, either a compute cluster or a compute instance. So, here you can see we are using a compute cluster. Okay, yeah, so I'll just quickly show you the code that is already uh, I have cloned in the yeah, so here you can see it's still running. And yeah, so all the model names are coming over here. Oh, okay. Some of them have been done. So you can see the AUCs listed out. Okay. So then you get an option here, guys. Deploy. There are two options. Again, the same two options, like real time or batch. It's up to you. Okay. I just I I wanted to show you the output, but unfortunately it's not coming. So I'll go to the notebooks. Yeah. So this is how you can create a online endpoint. The same steps, guys. Actually, 
everything is a repeat i just want to show you how you can give it a test how can you test it yeah so in uh, a real endpoint there is a concept of blue and green deployment so blue is your mod that you have created okay the base model that you have created okay if that mod if that model is not giving you appropriate results then you deploy something called as the green model so green model is like the upgrade to it okay and um, if that green model is giving you amazing results then you go for that green deployment okay so that particular this thing is called as blue green deployment if your green model is also not giving you good results then you can go for the blue deployment as well so you can roll back to it that is completely fine so you'll have to read more about it i'll show you where you can find uh, uh, information about that so here you are creating a blue deployment so you are considering okay this is your model that you are going to use okay so you registered the model over here you create an endpoint you are configuring the model okay and now you are creating a deployment of that model and here you are giving your sample data in the form of a json and you want to see what output you get so this is how it works and then you can delete all of this Uh, we actually don't know what happens behind the scenes. It's uh, something that you will have to uh, read about. Okay, it's just like um, which model works, which deployment works. Once you have registered the model, which model deployment works for your uh, sample data, you decide that if the blue deployment is working fine, you go with the blue. If it's not giving you the accuracy, okay you use the green deployment that's what it basically is about okay so you will have to just read more about it this is the idea i can give you okay like you can use even both in your more uh, in your endpoint like let's say model blue mm -hmm. deployment has uh, 70 you can manage your 70 percent traffic on the blue deployment and 30 percent traffic on the green deployment so you can even use that that is also fine okay so if you want to manage your data uh, 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 sample data like the example i gave you for the restaurant recommender so lots and lots of people are coming to your endpoint a lot of traffic is being generated mm -hmm. and it's taking time to predict okay so if you have another deployment ready okay that is your green deployment you can divert some of the traffic from the blue to the green. So by default, you have to create one of them, okay, uh, inside your uh, while you create an endpoint. That is in real end real time endpoint only. Okay. When it comes to batch, I you can use your own cluster, okay, and you can just create a simple endpoint, and there is no blue green over here. It's one end deployment that you are using. Okay. And you can just submit the job and get the results. Okay. So there is no concept of that. But you need to register the model, deploy them onto your cluster. Okay. And then out of that, create an endpoint. So here you can see the model is being taken, the model name is being taken. And top of that, you're creating a endpoint. And then you're mentioning your clusters with uh, what cluster you're using, description, environment, the script file, everything. And then you're preparing for your data, batch data. So you're collecting the data into a folder and then you're diverting and submitting a job. And once that is done, you will get the results over here. Okay, so I've, I've shared the URL for this in the chat box, so you can just uh, see how it works. Yeah, it's still running. 
it does take a lot of time. So this was more or less about uh, ML, I mean, uh, machine learning. Yes. Yeah. Otherwise, the code is almost the same. You just have to use one library ML flow everywhere. And you can do lots of things, create, get the data, create a compute, create a data store, create a data set. OK, so guys, the steps remain the same in each and every service that you use. Uh, in machine learning, okay, you have to get the data, store it at one place, do the transformation, correct? Then apply machine learning algorithm, train that model. Once that model is trained, register that model, deploy that model, depending on what endpoint you want to create, whether it's a real-time endpoint or a batch endpoint. So if it's a real-time endpoint, use the... Kubernetes cluster. Okay, if it's a batch endpoint, use the uh, same cluster that you had created. Okay, uh, while you were deploying or while you were training the model. So in each of these uh, three services, you were using the same steps. Okay, you need to know all the algorithms in order to use them into your services. Okay, and um. You will then decide which is the best training, best model that is giving you a good result. Okay, use that, create a real time endpoint or a batch endpoint and submit all of that with the uh, customer. Okay, so earlier we, we would submit the pickle file, the .py file, and the environment. Now we don't need to do that. We just give the endpoint and they can start consuming the uh, required, uh, just test give their own input and they can start working with the, they can start consuming the model. So let's just do a quick revision as to what we did in DP100. So it's a, a course for data scientists in order to learn how to use the Azure machine learning service, okay? You need to know the machine learning concepts before you get into this. The new concepts are about the data environment, and the compute, and of course, about the services. Then uh, in module two, we did about the data, we did about compute, we did about environment. Okay, what are the different types? Uh, how can you store your data? How can you link your data? You can even version the data, okay? Version one, version two, okay? And that is only possible in the data uh, uh, asset. Then, um, we studied about the designer, designer service in the Azure ML Studio. Okay, how easy it is just, just drag and drop. Okay, so the ones who are not confident with coding, they can use this service. Okay, once you submit the job, you can create an endpoint out of that. Then we looked at auto ML. You saw how auto ML made your task even easy, but just it is lots and lots of it takes lots of time to work. Okay. It's still not, it's still running. It's still training the model. Okay. But out of that, you can select which model it is training the best. Okay. And select those models accordingly and deploy it. Okay. Once the job is submitted. Okay. So that was auto ML. And then finally, we looked at notebook service. So notebook, if you're confident with your uh, coding skills, you can definitely use that. The steps remain absolutely the same, okay? You need to configure your workspace, okay? Of course, you need to create a workspace before you uh, configure it, and all the configuration details are present in the config.json file, okay? And then you uh, kind of then uh, create a data store, data asset, create a compute target. If you have a compute target, you mention the compute target, okay? Uh, then you create, uh, do the machine learning process, uh, algorithms, create a, create a script out in that notebook, okay? Um, then once you create the script, create a job out of that, 
using the command class and you submit it and then you can see the output. You can log that outputs using the ML flow track your model. OK, matrix using the ML flow library. You can uh, even um, create endpoints out of that using the ML flow library. OK, so basically you need to study what the ML flow library does. OK, and one thing that I couldn't cover is the ML ops. So it's also another open source library that uh, Azure uses or, or that you can use in order to monitor your operations. OK, in uh, these um, in this service. OK, so that's one thing that I could uh, uh, would have taken a lot of time. OK, so I'm uh, not going to go into that. And now let's move on to the certain questions. Let me just give you an overview of the exam prep session. OK, that you can. Uh, you need to know the details of the exam. OK, before you go and give the exam. So just uh, let's go through a couple of sample questions. OK, so uh, in um, if you have given any of the fundamental certifications, so the pattern more or less remains the same. The types of questions that come are also more or less the same. Just uh, there is one section that you get, which is full case study based. OK, in these advanced role based certifications, OK, where you have to uh, it's a continuous uh, like one case study you will get. And based on that, you will get three, four questions or four to six, actually not three, four, four to six questions where you have to based on that, con uh, depending on the case study, what solution is appropriate, you need to select. OK, and this case study section that you normally get uh, you have to do it in one go. You cannot go back and review those questions. OK. Uh, you have to uh, once you finish that section, you have to submit it and you can't even review it. OK, whereas the rest of the questions that come will you can go and review it and take as much as time as you want. OK, so let's just see a couple of sample questions. OK, you can get. Uh, yes and no type questions. You can get questions where uh, though they will be multi choice, but there can be two options, three options where you have to select out of those choices that are get, being given to you. Then you can have drop down options. OK, you have to uh, do the drop downs, uh, select from the drop down options. Then another option, uh, another type of uh, example that uh, another type of um, question can come is match the following. OK, like uh, you have to match certain like on the right hand side, they will give you definitions and on the left hand side, they will give you the term. OK, and you have to see which definition matches what. The other type of questions that can come is code based like ML flow. OK, uh, notebook activity, whatever we saw. So that is why I said you need to know the codes also. So you need to study those codes. So uh, so you need to complete the code. OK, so you need to know what method is used where, uh, what um, uh, syntax, what is the syntax you need to know. OK, so those kind of questions can come in the exam. So that is a overview. That uh, that I wanted to give. So here are some sample questions. So this is a very basic uh, example. So of course, when you saw when we did the designer uh, approach, you saw I trained the model first, then I scored it, and then I evaluated it. So of course, the answer is going to be A. Okay, and this is the approach that you take in a machine learning. Uh, if we had more participants, then I would have stretched it till six. But uh, now we the participant count has gone really low. OK, and um, uh, I will not be stretching it much. OK. Then uh, we some like I told you, you need to complete the code. So this is what a question can come. 
Okay, and guys, these are actual questions that have come in the exam. I've picked it up from there. Okay, so uh, uh, there is a, a site called as Exam Topics, which has the latest exam dumps in the um, um, for all the certifications, Microsoft certifications, AWS certifications, GCP, or whatever certifications. All the latest questions are available over there. Okay, so you can go and check that. That is also a good site. So from there itself, I have picked up these questions. Okay. So this is the answer for it. So you need to know cross validation and all the types of validations that are there. Okay, K fold, what parameters does K fold take? Okay, so you can get questions related to your machine learning concepts as well. Okay. And then something like this can come. Okay, the yeah. So the second half is here. So something like this can come. Like I told you, drop down options. Okay. So you have to select the appropriate option. So you can see load and then the sample data. Okay. So that is what. So you have to basically mention the path of your file. Okay. Of your data. You have to mention that's what this is doing. And we had seen in the uh, code as well. Then something like this arrange. Okay, in the correct order, you will have to arrange stuff in the correct order. Just drag it and place it. Okay, so this is how it will look like. Then you have to fill then another option like this. Okay, where the answer is only one over here. Then you have to select two options, like I told you in the beginning also. Uh, yeah, and if you're going for a real-time endpoint, uh, there are two uh, clusters, actually, not one, not only Kubernetes, but you can also use Azure Container Instance. If you have an idea of that, that is also good to use. I don't recommend using ACI. Go for the AK, AKS. That is a much better uh, service because, like I said, uh, orchestration is much better in AKS compared to ACI. Okay, so this is the answer to the question. Then again, you can ask, though you it's a multi choice. This thing just the answer cannot be one. There can be two options to every answer. So just read the question properly. Okay, and you can uh, you have to answer it accordingly. Something like this also can come. Okay, so you need guys. Basically, you need to know your machine learning concepts. Okay, now coming to the exam part pattern, uh, you get around two hours to solve this particular uh, exam to clear this particular exam. Okay, it's a MCQ. Okay, there is no negative marking, so you can attempt all the questions. Uh, but which question has how much um, weightage, how much marks, we do not know. Okay, then, um, like I said, you will get four to six case study based questions. Okay, and this particular section, you can't review it again. So please be careful while you answer these questions. Okay, then uh, you need around 700 marks, that is 70%. Uh, out of 1000 in order to clear this exam. Okay. And uh, there are questions that can come based on the code. So please go through the codes thoroughly. Okay. And you, uh, uh, you have to do the fill in the blanks kind of a thing. Okay. And of course, like I told you, there's no negative marking. So attempt all the questions. Now, if you want to schedule the exam, okay. Um, we can, uh, you have to go to this link. I will share this link in the chat box. Okay, with you all. So you can go and schedule your exam. I'll just show it to you all also. Yeah, so here, if you scroll down, you can schedule your exam and this is the cost that you can see how much you will have to pay in order to give the exam. 
So it's around 4,800. So if you purchase, um, I think a money server will give you the idea about the exam code if we have, okay? Uh, you can get it, since we are Microsoft Gold Partners, you can get it at a discounted rate and you can give this particular exam. Apart from that, you can even take a practice assessment. Okay, so these are questions uh, that actually uh, that uh, you can practice. Here, I need to sign in. Okay, I will not do that. Okay, but all you can give some questions, practice some questions. Okay, uh, see, create an. They have a environment created of person view. You can even go and do that. Okay, in. Uh, you by clicking on this take a practice, free practice test okay it's absolutely free that you don't have to pay for but for uh giving the exam you need to uh pay of course and the cost is four thousand eight hundred okay then if you want to study okay you can come to the training site and you can go for the courses and under courses search for dp 100 and you will get all the documentation, whatever I have done today, I have picked up from here itself. Okay. And you can uh, come and read all the information over here. Okay. So this is uh, where you can come and study. Apart from that, you can go and study from the documentation. Okay. Any documentation specific to a service or something like that, if you want to read, you can come to the documentations tab okay even dp100 certification if you see if you scroll down it has its own modules and learn paths as well so you it's the same thing okay you can come here and study the modules okay Then um, I gave you the reference links from where you can study for DP 100. If you want to get trained, you can come to us. We will definitely, since this is a four day course, okay, it's very much elaborate. Okay, uh, we couldn't cover majority of the things and majority of the things were not working for me. So um, because of that, we, uh, and it's a webinar, it's just to enlighten you all as to what this uh, uh, service or, or this certification is. And if it helps you, you can use it. Okay, so thank you everyone. Okay, before just don't leave, uh, there is uh, something that I want to share in the chat box. So I will just quickly share it. So in the beginning, Taitali had mentioned about the course achievement batch. So please uh, redeem that, guys. Okay, uh, you uh, since you have attended this training, so you can show it uh, or you can post it on your LinkedIn account. OK, that you have attended this training and you will get all the badges for this training. And apart from that, I would like you uh, to fill. This feedback form. Give us a feedback about this particular webinar. OK. Um, So guys, if you can just quickly give us a feedback, it will be really helpful. And once you have completed giving the feedback, just please uh, put it in the chat box. Uh, thank you, Mansi.
thank you sir hello mansi manish yes yes hi uh, thank you uh, mansi and uh, thank you everyone uh, please uh, uh, share feedback before leaving uh, mansi is a word uh, it's a wonderful session uh, thanks very much uh, guys please feed feedback form before leaving okay it's valuable to us okay we appreciate your thoughts and suggestions as they will allow us to make improvements in delivering our sessions and our webinars okay so please fill the feedback form before leaving and chaitanya already uh, shared a learning achievement batch with you so please redeem that batch so i'm sharing feedback thing link once again hello ashok ashwin satvik rishikesh pradha siddesh please fill the feedback form
yes mansi thank you very much participants you can leave also okay if you uh, already filled the fit of form thank you everyone